mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray to call it together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now, beloved, with the confidence of our forgiveness, let us now stand and sing along with the choir our morning hymn of praise, hymn number 268. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor give to his holy name like a shepherd. Jesus will guard his children in his arms. He carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Without further lining, let's lift up this great hymn of our church and our faith.
Amen. And now, beloved, as a Christian, if anyone were to ask you what is it that you believe, this is what you should tell them. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this is to come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and never shall be. Our scripture lesson this morning can be found in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 9. Again, that is 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. You'll hear some pages turn. I'll give you a second. First Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And it reads, take that back. We'll go to verse 12. 1 through 12. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the, saint, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in obedience. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. The inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith and shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, 
you may have had, may have, may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. The, uh, these have come so that, so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor, or when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you love him, and even though you do, you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls, considering the salvation of prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you, searched intently and with the, and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing when the, <clears throat> excuse me, when the predicted the sufferings of the Messiah, the glories that would follow, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the, of the things that have now been told, you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. I read for your hearing First Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. The word of God for the people of God.
Sister Green, I'm singing this one for you. All night. Come on. All night. I know it gets rough in the midnight hour, but all day. You gotta lift your voice louder all day. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, 
nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Anybody glad about God's word today? Anybody glad that you've got 24-7 surveillance all night, all day? God's angels are watching over you. Come on, let's pray. Angels, keep on, keep watching. Don't worry about it all night, oh. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Our Father and our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our friend, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done in our lives. We can't thank you enough, God, because every time we thank you, we think about something else we need to thank you for. And that is why we understand the sentiments of David when he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. The truth of the matter is, God, we can't help ourselves. Because you're just that good. You've been better to us than we can even begin to be to ourselves. You keep on doing great and marvelous things in our lives. So much, God, that we can't even keep up with your blessings. The truth is that you bless us even when we didn't know we were being blessed. Because you've kept us from danger seen and dangers unseen. You kept us, God, sometimes when you wanted to do ourselves in. You continue, God, to remind us why you made us and why we're here and why you love us, even in spite of us. We have not done anything, God, to deserve that kind of attention. But it's in your nature. 
You can't help yourself because you are love. And you love us, God, because we're yours. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, we belong to you. Yes, everything we are, everything we have, yes, even everything we're not, we're yours. Lock, stock, and barrel. And we thank you for loving us and for keeping us and for caring for us and, and healing us and helping us and lifting us, oh God, and giving us, God, the power to keep on getting up. Even when life seeks to take us out, some kind of way, God, your Holy Spirit comes and lifts us and gives us the encouragement to keep on getting up, to keep on making it, to keep on climbing, no matter how rough the road or how high the mountain or how tumultuous the storm, your power is available to us. And we give you praise. Now God, we ask that you forgive us once more for our many sins that you will cleanse us, God, and make us brand new. Give us, oh God, continued assurance of your grace and your mercy. Now, God, we pray that through this worship experience that your people can see you like we've never seen you before, can hear you like we've never heard you before, can feel you like we've never felt you before and go forth from this place determined to be witnesses like we've never witnessed before. Bless every home and every relationship, oh God. We give all of our cares to you, knowing, oh God, that you care for us. And we believe that you're going to work it all out for our good and for your glory. Now, God, keep watching over us. Keep guiding our footsteps. Keep showing us the path that you would have us go. And we'll be careful to always give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that you deserve. We ask it now with faith, believing that what we've asked is already done in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our King who sends angels to watch over us. Amen. All day, come on. All day. The angel. The angel. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, lift your voice and sing it all night, all, oh, all, all night. your voice all day.
and see. You're going to make me throw something at you. Come on, give God praise in this place. Lord have mercy. sleeping and snoring. <laughs> you hear something on the roof. People that ain't saved think it's old Saint Nick coming down the chimney. But could it be some angels tap dancing on your roof getting ready to bless you. There to protect you. Come on the angel. The angel. turn your attention very briefly as we lift up our announcements and welcome our visitors. We do have a special announcement coming from Mr. Gilbert McRae. He is our leader of leaders, but this morning he's coming to you on behalf of the church anniversary. Mr. McRae, please. Good morning, Little Walk. Good morning. Today I stand before you as a very special day in the life of Little Rock AME Zion Church. Today, Dr. Walker and the Walker family, we welcome you. 15 years ago today, Dr. Walker, you graced this church as our pastor. And for that, we say thank you. Short history, Dr. Walker. We left annual conference in June of 2005 without a pastor. You that were here, you know how that felt to be in a church without a pastor. But God saw fit to send us Dr. James M. Sloan, the presiding elder at that time, who governed and pastored us August and sept I'm sorry, July and August of 2005. But Bishop George W.C. Walker, he saw fit in his prayer to send us a pastor the first Sunday in September. There again, Dr. Walker, we are so blessed, we're better than blessed, to have you as the pastor of this great church that we call Little Rock African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Somebody ought to stand and say amen. amen. This morning, church family, we are gathered here as we kick off our church anniversary, 136 years of this great church. My, it's been a journey. It has truly been a journey, but to God be the glory. I want to share with you a couple of historical facts about Little Rock, so please bear with me as I share these remarks. It all began 1884 in the backyard of Sister Annie Hunter. But now look today, Little Rock, not only do we have a backyard, we got a front yard. <laughs> so to God be the glory. Rhonda Farmer, Smith, Ruby Tarver, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them there were two pastors elected as bishops, Reverend J.C. Clinton, Hogarth, 
and Bishop George J. Leake. Remember that, we share in history. Sister Shirley Green, Sister Michelle Gaskin, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them that we hosted the 1988 General Conference under the leadership of Dr. William M. White. Sister Green, Sister Gaskin, tell them we came back in 2012 and hosted the General Conference under the leadership of Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker. Amen. Ophelia Young, Ella Poindexter, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them that Dr. James Armstrong, a member of this great church, is a retired general officer of the AME Zion Church. Tell them that Brother Brandon Smith is a former youth president of the AME Zion Church. Tell them that Sister Vilma Du Leak is the widow of Bishop George J. Leak and now serves on the Board of County Commissions for Mecklenburg County. My, my, history. Randy Freeman, Stacy Love, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them that Hillary Clinton, yes. a candidate for the President of the United States, came through Little Rock. Tell them that Louis Farrakhan, Nation of Islam, came through Little Rock. Let them know this is history. Now, Reverend Rebecca Warren, Sister Diane Commander, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them we were blessed a few weeks ago. Yes. Charlotte City Council, affordable housing here on the campus of Little Rock. Tell them. I'm looking around. <laughs> my, my. We got history here. Yes, Sister Narcissus Laurie, yeah. Willie Crowder, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them. We've got 50 plus ministers here at Little Rock and we're seeking more. Sister Gloria Joanna Johnson. My, my. <laughs> Sister Maddie Klutz, if anybody asks you about the history of Little Rock, tell them that we are a community-minded church. We are here seven days a week, all day long. Tell them. Now, Little Rock, after you share these few facts about the great Little Rock Church, Close it by saying, we went from the backyard to the front yard. And now we are still being blessed 136 years later. Amen. Now moving forward to our current history, please be reminded that this week, revival, fall revival, September the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, we're going to be blessed by the word from Bishop W. Darren Moore, the presiding prelate of the Mid-Atlantic Episcopal District of the AME Zion Church. So I want to ask you as church members, families and friends, co-workers, join Dr. Walker, the office and the members of this great church for revival this week. But as you join us, come with your $136. That's right. That's right, $136. $1 per year to celebrate this great church. We do have flyers available that you may take with you today to share with your family, co-workers, and friends. So we're looking for a mighty, mighty good time this year, this whole conference year, but in particular, these next week that we celebrate 136 years of Little Rock. So Little Rock church members, I leave you as always simply to say, it's a good time. It really is a good time to be a member of Little Rock AME Zion Church. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you this week at Revival. Thank you. Um, if you left your purse in the fellowship hall this morning, we want you to know that it is in the church office, and you can see Ms. Glenn Lewis following the service. We do have a card, bless you for the little things you do in thoughtful ways. 
Bless you for the way you've brightened up so many days. Bless you for your giving heart as kind as it can be. Bless you in a thousand ways for truly blessing me. This comes from Mrs. Narcissus Lara and the Lara family. We do have one reminder from the uh, bulletin I'd like to lift up, and that is on uh, next Saturday, September the 7th, at 9 o'clock a.m. at Myers Tabernacle AME Zion Church. It's the annual missionary uh, day aside. While all officers are asked to be present, all missionaries are asked to be present because Mrs. Uh, Bowman, who is president of the district, wants everybody to come and sh hear shared what we learned at the Quadrennial Convention. There will be no registration fee. You can wear district colors, but please do your departmental colors, but no stoles, because remember that your stoles can only be worn over white. Thank you. We do have some visitor's cards. I'm going to ask as your name is called, please stand so that we, the Little Rock Emmy Zion family, can see who's worshiping with us this morning. We have Mr. Charles Carruthers of Charlotte, Ms. Krista Ennis of Hopewell, Florida. Cherie Bryant of St. Paul AME Church. Fleming Island, Florida. Darth Jack McGill of Charlotte. Daryl Joyner. And we have one person that left, but Miss, Miss Sundrum from Apostolic Church. If I do not have a card for you and you did not stand, please stand so that we might see who's with us this morning. And we simply want to say on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walk, and all the members and officers of Little Rock AME Zion Church, good morning and welcome. We do hope that we've made you feel so welcome that you will want to come often. But we also hope that if you're looking for a church family and church friends, that you will keep us at the top of your list. Thank you very much. You may now be seated. And now I present our pastor, Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker. Thank you so much, Mrs. Buck. Good morning, beloved. I greet you with Jesus' joy. Happy to stand and declare one more time that this is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I will. Yes, I will. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Anybody else want to rejoice in the Lord today? He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. I thank you for your presence today. I was concerned about you because of the, the race that's going on um, around downtown, if you would be able to get here. But you did pretty good. Anybody glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother McCray for lifting up that uh, wonderful announcement regarding our history. And it was quite informative and quite uh, uh, inspirational and that he was able to articulate with such, such specificity the history of this great church that has been established since 1884. And of course, we know he could express it with such specificity because he was here the whole time. He been here the whole time. I mean the whole time. He knows everything there is to know about Little Rock Church. But don't we love Brother Gilbert McCray? Amen. Amen. I love him for loving this church the way he does. And he pours himself into it and so it shows there's nothing wrong with being proud of where you belong. Nothing wrong with speaking well about your church. Amen. That's a good idea. Amen. Speak well about your church. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother McCray, for sharing that wonderful history. We do have a glorious history. 136 years that we have been uh, in, in ministry. And we thank God that we've been in this area just about the whole time. And uh, that God continues to bless us that even 136 years later, this church continues to do great and marvelous things as God continues to use us in great and marvelous ways. Amen. I'm looking forward to a wonderful celebration this week. I know that Bishop Moore is going to be here. He's going to be a blessing as he always has been. Uh, I'm happy to say that ever since I've been a pastor, 
since 1989. Bishop Moore, who is my friend, I've been able to invite him to come and to preach revival to every church I've pastored. Every year uh, we've been together, and it's been a blessing to me. And those of you who have heard him know how much a blessing it is to this church. I hope that you're here and that you will come to hear and to experience this spiritual treat that God will ignite our hearts as we are in revival. That's what this is, revival. Opportunity to awaken uh, because life and ministry have a way of wearing you out. And it's good that you stop every now and then just to get refreshed, to be reminded about who we are and why we are. And so don't just say, I'm going to come Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Thursday night. Come every night. Come every night so your soul can be fed. And as your soul is fed, it will certainly impact your, you, your life, and this church as God continues to bless us to serve him. Amen. I'm grateful to our choirs and our ministries who will be in place every night. Uh, every ministry, we need you to be in place. I want to thank you. I want to thank our sanctuary choir, which will sing on Tuesday night. Our youth choir will sing on Wednesday night. And the sanctuary choir will sing again on Thursday night. And so thank you in advance for everything you would do to ensure that this revival and this celebration is what uh, will the, the bless God and bless the people of God, that God will be glorified through this experience. Amen. Do you believe we're going to have a successful revival? Amen. It's going to be wonderful. Don't you miss it. Don't you miss it. Child, don't you miss it. You better be here. Be here and experience what God would do in this place. Amen. And don't forget your $136 either. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We need you to do that. Um, Speaking of our revival, I'm happy to say that our bishop um, wanted us to know that he's in support of what we're doing. And I was happy to receive last week a card from Bishop Battle uh, that he wrote himself. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise for that. People know that Bishop Battle is recovering from a stroke. And uh, I'm so blessed he's, he wrote a card. I'm not going to read the front of the card, but just to say, thinking of you and praying, God blesses you in an amazing way. He writes, my prayer is that you will have a wonderful revival and Sunday service, praying for your event, Bishop Battle. And along with that, he sends a check for $500 for my bishop. Amen. 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 We thank God for him. We look forward to seeing him, and we pray that we see him at the checkup meeting. I understand that he was at the checkup meeting last week in Blue Ridge, and so it would be wonderful if we would be able to see him at this. We have not seen him since he had a stroke in March, so I pray that, I think it was March or April, but I pray that he will be with us and that God will continue to strengthen him because uh, he really loves this district. He really loves his work. So pray, pray for our bishop, and we thank him again for his ministry. I received a card also this week from um, the mother of... Uh, Lewis Stewart. We know that our Lewis passed away a few weeks ago and uh, he had moved back to Philadelphia, but he always loved this church. Uh, Lewis, his mother sends a card. Please, uh, dear Dr. Walker, please convey our sincere appreciation to the entire Little Rock Amy Zion Church family for the lovely flowers sent to Lewis' celebration of life ceremony. We find comfort that the congregation that he so loved is praying for our family. Your long-term and continued support for Lewis has meant a great deal to me. Sincerely, Mary Stewart. Give God praise for that letter. Amen. Amen. Uh, because there's Bible uh, revival this week, we're going to ask that you will not come to noonday Bible study, but that you will come uh, to revival on Wednesday. So no noonday Bible study this coming Wednesday. We will resume next Wednesday with noonday and evening Bible study. But we want you to please support the revival. Also remind you that early voting is going on. So please go to your precincts and uh, vote to places. We'll go to the places that are open for early, early voting. Understand the votes are not going so well. Uh, Charlotte, we got to do better, amen? There's so much going on, and uh, every vote counts. 
And so I know Little Rock votes, but be sure that those persons that you know and love and uh, uh, that you encounter, uh, please be sure to encourage them to vote. Take them with you to vote if you need to. But like every vote, everyone vote. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, we've got a good problem in the uh, heaven storehouse. The storehouse is filled. Amen. Give God praise for that. Some of you know that at the Heaven Storehouse is our clothing ministry, and uh, you have responded so beautifully to uh, the request for clothes so much that we have run out of room. So give the Heaven Storehouse time to distribute the clothes that they have and before you bring any more. Amen? So we'll let you know when to bring more clothes. We thank you for your, bless you, we thank you for your, your clothes, uh, but we ask that you would just hold on to them or do something else, you know, the, uh, well, don't bring them here. Amen. Amen. Uh, at least for a while. Amen. And then we'll let you know when you can bring them back again. Amen. I was trying to find a better way to say that. <laughs> Pray for me. Amen. God bless you. Um, Amen. So anyway, keep uh, all of our Second Saturday members in your prayers. We certainly want to lift up in prayer those who have lost loved ones. Uh, Sister Narcissus Lowry lost another nephew, uh, Mr. Walter Leslie, whose services were held on yesterday. And uh, we heard from Mr. Peyton Coakley that his aunt passed away. Services for his aunt will be today in Sumter, South Carolina. Uh, keep uh, that family in prayer. His aunt's name was Mrs. Ida Myers. And uh, that service will be today in Sumter. And then, of course, keep Dr. James Armstrong in your prayers. Uh, he was hospitalized at Novant uh, this week. He was discharged on yesterday. He's at home. But please keep Dr. Armstrong and all of our Sick and Shut-In uh, shut members in your prayers. Amen? Amen. To all of our guests, we're so delighted to see each of you this morning that you've come to worship with us here at Little Rock Amy Zion Church. We know you could have worshiped anywhere, but we're so delighted that you are here, and we're so grateful for your presence. Listen, if you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor, and Little Rock would love to be your church. Amen, Little Rock? Amen, amen. amen. Come back and say, anytime your schedule allows. Oh, by the way, today, uh, we are pleased that we will be distributing checks uh, to th from the CD Reaper Scholarship Fund for those persons who applied for scholarship monies. We will be distributing them before the end of service today. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let us stand and greet each other in Christian love. Tell somebody God loves you, and so do I. Stand and sit Status is strength, there's no, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. Status is strange. There's no more, there's no more decline. I'm on my way. On my way, 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 Status is changing. No more decline. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better day. Status is changing.
My status is changing. My status is changing. There's no more decline. There's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. My status is changing. My status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. On my way. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. I'm on my way to better days. To better days. On my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Better days. Come on, I'm on my way to my seat. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. To better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Amen. Give God praise in this place. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's have church. Amen. I do want to acknowledge our new deaconess. Let me ask our seven new deaconess to please stand. Our new deaconess just consecrated last week. Give God praise for them. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's have church.
God, we praise you. And you are worthy to receive all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. You are God. In a class all by yourself. And we exalt you today. We lift you up. Because we realize as we lift you up, you lift us up. Lifting us above our problems, above our cares, above our worries, above our sicknesses, above our pressures, above our bills. Be lifted up, O oh God. Rule and reign in this place. We adore your majesty and we thank you for your love. I stand now today, O oh God, with every desire in my heart to preach your word, recognizing that I can't preach or do anything on my own, but understanding and believing that I can, yes, I can do all things through you who gives me strength and power. So send now the anointing that makes preaching easy and possible. Be in my head and in my thinking. Be in my mouth and in my speaking, but most of all, be in my heart and in my feeling. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts will be found acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Spirit of the living God, fall now fresh on us. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord one more time in this place. Amen. Let's give God praise for our music ministry. What a powerful selection. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Amen. Amen, for he is worthy. I want to thank Reverend Albany for reading the scripture this morning from the first letter of Peter to the church. That's first Peter. He read verses 1 through 12. But I want to call your particular attention to verses 6 through 9 as you reflect on verses 1 through 12. Look with me, please, at verses 6 through 9. And from the New King James Version, this is what it says. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ whom having not seen you love Though now you do, not, you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That the genuineness of your faith, 
being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to talk for just a little while today from this subject, when healthy churches grow. When healthy churches grow. Let the church say, when healthy churches grow. When healthy churches grow. I need your prayers. Beloved, hopefully by now you recognize the title of this sermon, for it is in fact the theme we are using for this conference year. Healthy churches grow. I'm sure that I'm on safe ground when I suggest to you that God wants all churches to be healthy. Because God has sent us to minister to a sick world. And we cannot possibly impact a sick world when we're sick also. A sick church can only infect a sick world. But a healthy church can and must impact a sick world. That is why we must be deliberate to not only talk about being healthy, but we must exercise in order to stay healthy. I heard a mantra, and I can't remember the author's name who shared it, but he said, healthy things grow, growing things change. Change presents a challenge. Challenges makes us trust God. Trusting God is healthy. Healthy things grow. I'm going to say that again. Healthy things grow. Growing things change. Change presents a challenge. Challenges makes us trust God. Trusting God is healthy. Healthy things grow. As a matter of fact, I want to say it this way. Healthy churches grow. Growing churches change. Change presents a challenge. Challenges make us trust God. Trusting God is healthy. Healthy churches grow. As a matter of fact, I don't mean to insult you, but I do want you to repeat that with me because I want you to get this. Please repeat after me. Healthy churches grow. Healthy churches grow. Growing churches change. Growing churches change. change presents a challenge. Challenges make us trust God. Trusting God is healthy. Healthy churches grow. Give God praise if you believe that today. Yes, healthy churches grow. I don't know how you feel about it, but I want to pastor and you should want to belong to a healthy church. And as we strive to become and to be a healthy church, and as we strive towards excellence in ministry, we will be challenged with growing pains as we grow. And sometimes we may feel like, as a Christian, that we should be exempt from pain and challenges. But I've discovered, and I hope you would agree, that it's not what you don't go through that makes you grow and mature but rather it's what you do go through that makes you grow and mature. And yes, as we go each day with each turn and each passing day, we will be met with challenges upon challenge as individuals and as a collective body. I'm sorry to report that, but there are some things that we just have to go through. But I've come to observe and understand that each thing that we go through really prepares us, get this, for the next thing we must go through. Because somebody besides me knows there's always a next thing. 
Am I right about it? Yes, we are faced in our day and our time with a deteriorating culture of crumbling social values and diminishing moral consciousness. And it appears that the world is on its way to hell in a handbasket. It is then absolutely imperative that we, as the church, as God's people, that we must wake up, step up, and speak up to let the world know that there is something more to life than what we see and what we hear. Somebody say there's something more. Yes, there's something more. In spite of the shocking news that we hear and the dreadful sights that we see, there is something more. There's something more than the pitiful political presidential propaganda we see tweeted on a regular basis. There's something more. There's something more than the dreadful drug dilemma that devastates families and communities. There is something more. There's something more than the eroding economic environment we are experiencing. There is something more. There's something more than the grief caused by gangs and guns. There's something more. There's something more than the traumatic teenage troubles that are tragic. There is something more. There's something more than the critical careless cuts from a conservative Congress. There's something more. There's something more than the maze of media madness that has us mesmerized. There's something more. There's something more than the scathing sexual scandals from spiritual sources. There's something more. There's something more than all of this to all of this. And all of these things constantly confront us. And if we're not careful, we can be led to believe that these factors will determine our destiny and will cloud our future. Y'all still here? That the sickness that pervades our society and the sickness that pervades our world, we begin to believe will be permanent. That is why I'm glad to share these words from the apostle Peter. You see them here in the first chapter. Peter is writing to the church. If you look up at verse 1, you would see that he is addressing the whole church. He lists several churches. He addresses the scattered saints who are in various places. And I'm sure as we look at the words he shares with these scattered saints, that we would know that these words also apply to we who are also scattered saints living in Mecklenburg County of North Carolina. Peter is one of the 12, one of the 12 disciples. And if we would consider his circumstance that he pens this letter that's before us, one would reach a depressing and discouraging conclusion. As we look at this letter, we will surmise that Peter is in trouble because Peter at the time of this letter is in prison he's in a cold a damp dark jail cell with imminent persecution from the Emperor Nero before him he's separated and he's isolated from his family and from his friends he's probably in pain from the wounds of the lashes from the beating on his back He's been taken from the soldiers and the guards. Look at him now sitting with his back against the wall. Yet the text before us reveals a preacher who is not having a pity party, but it reveals one who has nothing but praise on his lips. Evidently, Peter has learned that there is something more to life than what meets the eye. Peter, no doubt, has a tremendous degree of faith. We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But we also know that faith must be cultivated. Hmm? Faith must be strengthened. So in that situation, and perhaps in your situation, and my situation, and our circumstance, we must understand it is necessary that we exercise our faith. Somebody say, exercise your faith. In order for something to grow, in order for something to get stronger, you've got to exercise it. Exercise your faith. 
Because what faith is, faith is trusting what the eyes can't see. Y'all still here? I said faith is trusting what the eyes can't see. You don't know this, but your eyes can play tricks on you, you know. Your eyes can have you operating by fear instead of faith. You see, the eyes see the prowling lion, but faith sees Daniel's angel. The eyes see the flood, but faith sees Noah's rainbow. The eyes see the giant, but faith sees David's slingshot. The eyes see the Red Sea, but faith sees the promised land. The eyes see sin, but faith sees the Savior. The eyes see guilt, but faith sees grace. The eyes see the grave, but faith sees a city whose builder and maker is God. That's why we must walk by faith and not by sight. So in order to grow, there is a process to grow. And that is why we must exercise in order to build our faith and then demonstrate our faith when healthy churches grow. Somebody said when healthy churches grow. So beloved, I'm almost done. If by chance you're feeling a bit put out today, and if by chance you are struggling because you are just going through the pains of life, you got bills you can't pay. You've got sickness in your body or in your family. You find yourself today unemployed or you find yourself emotionally injured by a friend or a relative. I want you to know that you're not alone. You're in mighty good company because when the Christian faith is going through the crucible of life, that is when it becomes the strongest. That's how and that's when healthy churches grow. Look what Peter says again in verse number three. Peter says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. Get this, reserved in heaven for you. you. You who? You who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The first thing that we must understand when healthy churches grow, I got to tell you that when healthy churches grow, the first thing you must understand is that healthy churches will be, first of all, refined by pressure. Somebody say refined by the pressure. Yeah, we're going to have to go through some pressure as the people of God. All of us will have to encounter pressure in our lives. Somebody's going through some pressure right now. And if you're not going through any pressure, keep on living. Because pressure will be part of your life even as a child of God. You can have pressure in your life. There will be pressure in your home. You're going to go through pressure at the job, pressure in the community, and pressure even in the church. And Peter helps us to understand because he looks at us and he compares uh, our faith to gold. And what he says is, in order for something precious like gold to become gold, it's got to go through a process of being refined. Y'all still here? 
In Peter's day, metals like gold were refined in crucibles in fiercely hot furnaces. But when the metal melted, the impurities floated to the top and the refiner would skim off the impurities from the top. And after repeating the process, the metal shone bright and clear. And the refiner knew it was clear because he could see his reflection in it. Lord have mercy, I gotta, I gotta go. Our faith is precious. But I got to tell you something, it's got to go through some various trials. But when the trials are over, once the heat is turned up, I know in your life and my life, sometimes it feels like the heat is on. The heat is on at your job. The heat is on in your home. The heat is on on your bills. But you're just going through a process. The refiner is allowing the heat to be on. Because the hotter it gets... The harder you experience the pressures of life, the more you go through the various trials. When the trials are over, the impurities of your life will float to the top. And God, who is a refiner, will skim off those impurities until he sees his own reflection in you. And what God wants to do is keep on putting you under pressure so that the things that are on the inside of you will come out of you so that he can see his face in you. So he can get the glory out of your life. Some things you just got to go through. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. There's some things you just got to go through. Because what God wants to do, he wants to see himself in you. God wants to get the glory out of your life. But that means that sometimes there'll be some things you just got to go through. That's why I like what Albertino Walker said years ago. Please be patient with me. God... Is not through with me yet. Please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. Because when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Give God praise. You're glad about that. Yeah, there's just some things you just got to go through. I'm sorry you got to go through the things you got to go through. I'm sorry you got to cry sometimes. I'm sorry that people hurt your feelings sometimes. I'm sorry that things don't always work out sometimes. But God is doing a work in you. If you just be patient and if you just trust him, you'll see why you're going through what you're going through. I'm not talking as one who's a novice. I know what I'm talking about, but I've been through some things. Like, I, like, like, like Andre Crouch said one day, I've had many tears of sorrow and I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong, but in every situation, God's given me a blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. I've been so many places and I've seen so many faces, but there have been times when I felt so all alone, but in my lonely hours, yes, those blessed lonely hours, my Jesus came and said, Dwayne, you are my own. So I learned how to thank God for my mountains. I've learned how to thank him for my valleys. I thank him. I thank him. Yes, I thank him. Yes, I thank him. Yes, I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. For I found out if I never had a trouble, how would I know with how to solve them. How would I know what faith in God can through? But through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Give God praise if you're glad about it today. That when the church grows, I'm afraid that the growth process involves being refined by the pressure. But keep on reading. He talks about being tried by the fire. But not only being tried, but being tested. You're refined by pressure. But then he goes on to say that we are reassured by God's presence. Now I find it interesting that Peter is writing this. I told you where he is. I told you what he's going through. But what Peter seems to suggest to us is that God is not giving up on us. 
And since God has not given up on us, I've come by to tell you, don't you give up on God. Don't give up on God because God has not given up on you. Now, it's mighty interesting that Peter is the one talking about going through a test. Because if you're a Bible reader, you've met Peter before. And Peter has had in his time with Jesus several tests, hasn't he? And as we look at Peter and we look at the test that he's gone through, we can also surmise that Peter didn't do so well on his test. As a matter of fact, he seemed to fail time and time again. Let's review this, Peter. Peter, you said that you were tested, but yet when we look back at you, we recall that one day you were there on a storm-tossed sea with other disciples. And you and the other disciples were afraid because you saw someone walking on water. And when you found out it was Jesus, you asked him to let you come out on the water. And you started walking on the water. Peter said, yeah, that's right. Well, but Peter, we also know that you saw the wind. And when you saw the wind, you took your eyes off of Jesus. And so you failed that test. Well, Peter said, yeah, that's true. But that's not the end of my story. Well, then I said, well, Peter, I'm glad you brought that up. Because I remember, Peter, that when Jesus asked you and the disciples who the men say that I am, you spoke up and said that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But when Jesus told you what that would mean and how he would have to die, you tried to prevent him from dying. You tried to stop it and said it would never happen. And Jesus had to say to you, get behind me, Satan, because you are mindful of the things of man and not of God. So Peter, if I recall Oh, you failed that test too. But Peter said, well, I'm glad you brought that up, but I got more to my story. Well, Peter, I'm glad you brought that up. Funny you should mention that. When Jesus was, 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 was with you, 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 you told Jesus that you were going to stay with him always. But Jesus told you that you would deny him three times before the cock crowed twice. And you said you wouldn't do it. But when they came to get him, you denied that you ever knew him. And when we looked for you, you were found warm in your hands by the enemy's fire. So what's up with that, Peter? You failed all that test. Well, Peter says, well, yeah, you got that right. I did fail some tests. I did take my eyes off of Jesus. And I did tell Jesus uh, that Jesus did tell me to get behind me, Satan. And I did deny him three times. But how you like me now? How you like me now? That's not the end of my story. I've come by to let you know that no matter what you've done in your past, that God does not hold your past against you. Because at the end of the day, it's not about your performance, but it's about his presence. He was with you the whole time. I couldn't be here if it was up to my performance, but I'm so glad that in spite of my performance, he provides his presence to do for me and to do through me what I could not possibly do for myself. I'm so glad that he gives me his presence and it's not about how well I do. It's about how good he is because at the end of the day it's not about my grade it's all about his grace at the end of the day it's not about my ability it's about his availability. At the end of the day it's not about my plan it's about his purpose at the end of the day it's it's not about my strength. It's about his spirit. He told me, you just go. You go. Go into all the world and make disciples of every creature. Baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Anybody glad that no matter where you are, he's with you. He promised he'll be with you always. He's with you all the time. Anybody glad that he's always there? When bad news comes, he's there. When hell breaks loose, he's there. When friends forsake you, he's there. When doctors give up on you, 
he's there when the pink slip comes he's there when your house in foreclosure he's there when your boo makes you boo hoo he's there he's there all the time you may ask me well preacher how do you know I'm so glad you asked that question I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunders roll I've felt six breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul but I heard I said I heard I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on and he promised I said he promised never 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 to leave me never to leave me alone anybody glad he's always there he's always there all night all day I got angels watching over me my Lord all night all day angels are watching over me give God praise if you're glad about it hallelujah hallelujah and so we're glad today to understand that when the church grows we may be refined by pressure and when the church grows, we are reassured of his presence. But lastly, as we look at this text, when the church grows, we know that we can rejoice in his promises. I said we can rejoice in his promises. I didn't say you can rejoice in my promise. And I didn't say you can rejoice in the bishop's promise. And I didn't say you can rejoice in the president's promise. You know you can't rejoice in that promise. But you can rejoice in God's promises because somebody besides me knows that the God that we serve keeps his promises. Anybody glad? He keeps his promises. And so it does not matter what you're going through right now. I know it may be hard. I know it be rough. I know you've had to cry sometimes. I know you don't understand what's going to happen next. But I'm so glad that because God keeps his promises, I can report to you that trouble does not last always. Anybody glad about that? I said trouble doesn't last always. That's why I've come by to tell you that weeping may endure for the night. But joy, joy, joy comes in the morning. Don't you worry about it. No matter what you're going through, it's not going to be that way all the time. You keep on holding on. I've come by here to let you know that a brighter day is coming. I've come by here to let you know that your blessing is on the way. Your deliverance is on the way. Your healing is on the way. Your deliverance is on the way. Your job is on the way. Your house is on the way. Your car is on the way. Whatever it is that God has promised you, you keep on holding. You keep on trusting because it's on the way. Don't you give up on God because he won't give up on you. I've come by here to remind you that we are tossed and driven on this restless sea of time. Somber skies and highly tempest all succeed a bright sunshine. But in that land, a person perfect day when the mist are rolled away we will understand it better and better by and by by and by when the morning comes all the saints of God are gathered home and we'll tell the story how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by when the church grows it'll keep on holding on when the church grows it'll keep on getting good to do what God says do when the church grows a healthy church grows when a healthy church grows God will be glorified Jesus will be magnified people will be edified faith will be fortified and ministry will be multiplied when a healthy church grows in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost Amen Amen Everybody standing
we're celebrating 136 years in ministry this week and we praise God that we're still here there are those who've been here for a while not as long as Gilbert McCray but you've been here for a while and you know that this church has gone through many tests and many trials not only as the collective body, but those among us have gone through tests and trials. But we're still here. Can we praise God for that? We're still here. You're still here. And that which God has allowed us to go through, he does not allow us to go through to make us bitter but to make us better. Not to make us weaker, but to make us stronger. Not to dumb us down, but to wise us up. Because it's the things that we go through that teaches us how to trust him. That teaches us how to have faith and to believe in his promises. I'm here to tell you today that he will never let us down. Let me make it personally personal. He has never let me down. I wonder if there's someone here who can just raise your hand and say he's never let me down. He's never let me down. Well, we got to keep on, keep it on. I wonder if we can sing together, I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. And if you're here today without a church home, without a savior, I want you to come and give me your hand and give God your heart. And make a decision to accept him as your Lord and your personal Savior. No matter what you may be facing in your life, God has kept you here for a reason. And even through your pain and pressure, he's growing you into a stronger man of God, a stronger woman of God, a, a, a stronger church for him. In our 136 years, we won't give up, but we'll keep on striving. We'll keep on growing. We'll keep on serving him. We'll keep on trusting him. Would you join us today? Would you join the Church of Jesus Christ? Would you join this house of faith, this body of believers? We're not a perfect church, but we're a growing church. We're a trusting church. We're a church that believes in the promise of God. And if you're here today and you determine you're not going to give up, but you want to hold on to God's unchanging hand, would you come? I feel like... Yes, I feel... that one though try would you come on every oh I feel you don't have a church home would you come I feel going on you can come come on I I feel
Yes, I feel. I won't give up. I feel like going on. Though trial on every hand, oh, I feel. I pressing my way, pressing my way. I feel like pressing my way. I feel like pressing my way. God bless you. my way I feel like going on I feel, I feel like going on. Oh, I feel Every hand. Oh, on every hand. Oh, I feel. God bless you. Please be seated. Amen. Uh, Sister Evangela has come down on behalf of a co worker who's very, very sick. And she's here to stand in the gap for her co worker, believing that God is able. And we join her in that prayer today. Holy God, we thank you for the assurance provided in your word. That even when we go through the trials and difficulties of life, that we don't face them alone. That you are with us every step of the way. We thank you for your servant, Evangela, who is coming as a witness to your power and is claiming that power on behalf of her co-worker. I don't know that co-worker's name, but you know that name. You know who it is and what it is they're facing. So we pray, God, that even right now, you will go to them and give them peace. Let them feel your presence in their room and let them know that they're not alone. Now, God, we thank you for hearing this prayer. And we, oh God, submit to your sovereign will on their behalf. We place them in your care, oh God, believing that you will work it out for their good, but most of all, for your glory. Get the glory in this, oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We keep praying. Amen. We all, although trials come, oh, I feel. Amen. Give God praise in this place if you're going to go on. Amen. 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 God is not through blessing you. Amen. Amen. He's not through with us. And we got to go through some things. But God will bring us safely through it. Amen. The operative word is through. In order to get to it, we've got to go through it. But you'd be with us every step of the way. Anybody believe the word of God today? Every step of the way. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts now to receive the 
holy sacrament, the blessed body and shed blood of Jesus, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all of their guilty stains. If any person sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy way, Draw near with faith and take the Holy Sacrament to your comfort and devoutly kneeling, make your humble confession to Almighty God. We call now the officers of the church to come down, officers of our church ministers to please come forward. Oh, wash all my sins away, and there may I. Watch all. Watch all my sins away. Leave out the kneel. Watch all my sins away. And there may I.
we do not presume to come to this thy holy table. O merciful Lord, trusted in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did us give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption? Who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice? Oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for remission of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. body of Jesus was broken for me. I take it and I eat it. I feast upon it in my heart as I think about what he allowed to happen to him. Not because of what he did, but because of what I did. His blood was spilled for me. He allowed his body to be pierced and the blood to come flowing down so much so that it reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. I take it, I drink it. I'm thankful for what he did just for me.
It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, we thank the Son of Archangels and all the company of heaven. We, Lord, and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee. And sing holy. Holy. holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, the Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of. My brothers and my sisters, before you is the body of Jesus. Would you take it and would you eat it? It was broken just for you. Take it that it may preserve your soul and your body into everlasting life. His blood is also there. Take and drink it. As you drink it, know in your heart that all of your sins are washed away. Drink it that your soul will be refreshed, that your sins will be forgiven. Arise now, my father's children, go in peace. May the God who loves peace go with you. As these retired and others come. Amen. Devoutly kneel those who are able. I'm singing glory. Before you is the body of Jesus. Would you take it and eat it? Feel him in your heart with thanksgiving. His blood is also there. Take and drink it. As you drink it, knowing your heart that all of your sins are washed away. Amen. I am so Arise now, my father's children, go in peace. May the God who loves peace go with you. Oh, Jesus. As these retired others come, where he took me in, singing glory. Come to the Lord's table. Bring your best to the Lord. Receive your best from the Lord. Sing. 